Greetings, everyone, on this third Sunday of our Advent season, Gaudete Sunday. The scriptures this weekend call us to rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in all circumstances give thanks. The psalm says, my soul rejoices in the Lord, and Isaiah challenges us to bring glad tidings to the poor. In the gospel, John the Baptist was sent to testify to the light. Some may wonder this Gaudete Sunday of 2020, how do we rejoice when the world seems turned upside down? When most everything in our lives has changed so drastically? Certainly very honest questions honest reactions to the scriptures of this Gaudete Sunday. Perhaps our faith is being radically challenged this year. Perhaps for some it's really hard to rejoice due to being sick with COVID or having lost family members to COVID, being out of work, not being able to go to school, college students sent home early, feeling isolated, anxious, depressed, sad, worried, and fearful. So very much is happening that challenges us this year to our core. Yet the season of Advent is a season of hope and calls each of us to a deeper understanding of what true joy really is, how one can really rejoice even in the midst of a great deal of suffering. It's not about being happy. Happiness and joy are not the same. Happiness is only temporary. And happiness is always connected to external events. Joy comes from a deep internal trust. Trust that God is with us, Emmanuel, and all things will work out in the end. You see, joy is about hope, not giddy happiness, not loud celebrations. Joy exists in the depths of our souls, and no external situation can take that away from us. It's about trust and grace, and perseverance and determination, about God's spirit inside each one of us, strengthening us no matter what is happening all around us. In 1992, it was a time of terrible unrest and civil war in Sarajevo. Different leaders spread hatred between citizens who belonged to different religions and ethnic groups. Everyone became an enemy of someone else. No one was safe. Men, women, children, babies, grandparents, old and young, strong and weak, partisan and innocent. All were in constant danger. On May 27th at 4 p.m., a long line of people waited in the middle of a city street. They stood outside the bakery, hoping to get what little bread was left being made. Flour was scarce, as was all food. Suddenly, without warning, a mortar bomb dropped in the center of that line. In one fiery explosion, concrete, twisted metal, and people were scattered all around. 22 people perished. Few were spared. No one would forget. Everyone felt helpless, except one man, a musician, a cellist. Middle-aged, longish hair, great bushy mustache. He played the cello as a member of the Sarajevo Opera Orchestra. He had waited for the fighting to stop. It was the fighting that discouraged patrons from attending the opera. The orchestra then disbanded. He was out of work. He too was hungry. He knew that it could have been him in that bread line. He felt sad and angry. But what could he do? On the following day, May 28th, at four o'clock, this one man, Vedran Smelak, took
took a cafe chair and placed it in the heart of the crater left by the bomb. Dressed in formal evening clothes, he brought his cello and played in front of the bakery where many of his neighbors perished. Smalok played Albiani's moving adagio in G minor. Perhaps he chose it because it was written using music found on a scrap of paper found in the ruins of Dresden after the Second World War. The music had survived the firebombing of the concentration camps. Perhaps that is why he played in there the sacred streets of Sarajevo. Something he thought must survive. Something must triumph over horror. So Vaden played this piece on his cello amidst sniper fire and bombs falling all around him. He played the same piece every day at four o'clock for the next 22 days. One performance for each person who had died. This one man would not let the darkness overtake him. He testified to the light. He did as John the Baptist did in our gospel, and he did bring glad tidings to the poor. He lived Advent, hopeful expectation. May, may we find that deep sense of joy buried in our souls this Advent season and bring light into the darkness around us, even in the midst of this pandemic, even in the midst of all the challenges that we are facing. We can rejoice always, and we can in all circumstances give thanks when we have that deep faith in Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Let us continue to pray for each other during this third week of our Advent season so that we will all remain healthy and safe. Have a good week, everyone.